All right, CW Flash fans. Now this video is, I gotta admit, it's probably gonna come off as a rant because really, I'm just sick of dealing with a specific group of people. I mean, trust and believe, there are people around the world, and let me just say specifically on the internet that you, if you say anything as if they take as offensive or bad about the particular person or thing, they all love then you are in for a brawl and by brawl I mean you're going to be jumped by like five million people of the fandom that you uh, so-called criticize I mean Beyonce has the beehive Trump has his supporters but then there are the worst of the worst and they my friends are the West Allen fans basically the group of people who just love Barry Allen and Iris West, or excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. West Allen, whatever, however you want to say it. I mean, trust and believe, I love me some Flash. I have to admit that currently, Black Lightning is my favorite CW show. Season one was terrific. I just watched the season two premiere. Looks like we're in for a great start for the season itself. My only critique on season two that I didn't like was that they killed Cyanide off way too early. I mean, I follow the actress on Instagram and, you know, she's been posting pictures from like, you know, um, some like places in Europe doing like fashion shoots and whatnot. I'm like, well, I know she was on set for the first episode filming, but then all of a sudden she got on a plane and went to Europe. I'm like, oh, well, maybe she's on a mission by Tobias Well and she'll come back later in the season. But as the filming went on, you know, she's still taking photos and whatnot. I'm like, oh. Don't tell me they're going to kill her off. And they show sure enough did within the first 10 minutes. After a decent fight scene, she was gone. So my boo is gone. Basically, my favorite lady on the show. But that's besides the point. Legends of Tomorrow. That show, honestly, I don't care what people say about season one. You know, I hate the Hawks. You know, Hawkman and Hawk Girl, Vandal Savage was terrible. As bad as season one was, it was really charming. And... Honestly, it's one of my, I, I honestly think that it's my favorite season of Legends to rewatch. Uh, I got this first season on DVD, when it, or even if I'm on Netflix, I'll find myself maybe watching one or two episodes whenever I'm, you know, just wanted something to watch, and it's really enjoyable, mainly because of Captain Cole, that's probably why. Um, Arrow, I, I kind of gave up on Arrow about a season or so ago, basically. Season 7 does look promising, though, so I will give it a shot. It comes back on October 15th. Uh, going back to Legends real quick, I actually love the show because it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's so damn goofy that I just love it. So I am looking forward to uh, w what's coming up, Season 4. Uh, so what? Flash, Black Lightning, Legends, Arrow. Supergirl, I didn't watch the second half of Season 3. Um, I think the last episode I watched was the first episode that premiered after they had been off the air for how long what three to five months i forgot the exact time but after what was it the episode where Wynn's mother returns to his life after the toy man died and i maybe because that episode it wasn't a terrible episode but it really wasn't the best episode to air after it had been off the air for so long so after that lackluster episode i just stopped watching um i've been told that the rest of season three was pretty dang good so at some point i will watch it on netflix but talking about the flash seasons three and four were definitely not the show's best i feel like the show was phenomenal in season one i actually started watching the series about five episodes into season two so i actually binged season one on netflix after the first two episodes, I was like, okay, this is pretty interesting. And then I'll never forget the first time I saw um, episode eight, the uh, Flash and Arrow team up. And keep in mind, Flash was the first CW superhero show I had watched. So I hadn't watched Arrow up until that point. And watching those two teaming up was almost just like being a kid again, watching the Power Ranger team ups. You know, whenever one season would come on to another season. No, what was it? The previous season Rangers would come into the current season's uh, Ranger teams um, team up episode, whether it be a one or two parter. And it just made me smile. So just seeing those two on screen together made me smile. And then as the season went on, we get to the pre-season finale episode where Reverse Flash fights Flash, Firestorm, and Arrow. 
even though Arrow did most of the work and just seeing those three lining up once again felt like a Power Ranger team up because it was like a culmination of everything season one has built up so far. And now you're fighting the main villain. That's still one of my favorite boss fights on the Flash, if not the entire CW, CW um, Arrowverse shows. I mean, I just love the fight. The, the dialogue and everything was great. Then we get into season two. Season two to me was great up until the reveal of Zoom when he took the mask off and we saw it was Hunter Zolomon or Jay Garrick, whatever you want to call it at that time. After that, the rest of the season felt kind of meh, like everything kind of fell apart in my opinion. I love the idea of Earth 2 and everything. Then we get to season three, Flashpoint, disappointing, Savitar, dragged out plot. Then we get to season four, new villain, not a speedster. And the trademark, we are the Flash. And season four is where the Iris hate really sparked up due to Iris West being the leader of Team Flash. And I have so many things to say about that. But really, I, I go through all this to say, I know you're probably like, well, what does, what does it have to do with West Allen fans? Pete, I just don't like talking to people who can't see the truth. Basically, they put on blinders to anything that is said negative about the character like iris west could go into jitters and shoot a little girl her mom and dad and the people behind the counter for no good reason but iris west fans would still love her to pieces and if anybody said iris had no business doing that that was completely evil she needs to be locked up they would be like no you're just a west allen hater shut up that's how bad it is. I feel like it's that bad within that particular fandom that nothing Iris does is wrong. And season four was full of wrongdoings by Iris West. And this has nothing to do with Candace Patton. I love the actress. I remember her on the game on BET and a few other things I've seen her in in the past. But in terms of how the writers portray Iris West, it is not good. I mean, it doesn't help that when it comes to West Allen, Season three of The Flash was bad because Barry was an asshole to everyone because he wanted to save Iris. I mean, if you go back to season three, he was a complete, just a complete dick to Wally West. Like anything Wally did, he would just lash out at him. And if I'm not mistaken, this was really done even before um, it was revealed that the reason he's pushing so hard and being so short with everyone is because he's trying to save Iris from Savitar in the future. But if anything else, Team Flash didn't even feel like Team Flash. It just felt like Barry barking out orders and doing whatever it took to save Iris, even if it meant going back in time to get Snart and um, going to the future to meet his future self. It, it pretty, it, I think Killer Frost, or yeah, well, Caitlin, before she went on full Killer Frost, was like, what do you care, um, Barry? You got Iris. You got your happy ending to hell with everyone else, right? That was one of the best quotes on the entire series, like after four seasons, because that defined Barry Allen so well in season three. It didn't matter who he stepped on, who ended up falling. As long as Iris was safe, everything else be damned. And then you move into like season four, where I understand the entire season was really hyping up. Hey, you have Barry and Iris, as um, Ralph said, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Star Labs. And then you have the thinker and the mechanic. And their relationships were supposed to parallel each other. Based, and it really got annoying. I mean, people complained about how the bus metas, it was really predictable. Like every time we met a new bus meta, well, the first couple times when, you know, they ended up being body snatched by DeVoe, it was really creepy. But then after like the third or fourth time, it's like, well, we meet a new bus meta. I wonder what's going to happen by the end of this episode. What really made me more annoyed was the fact that Barry was acting so out of character in certain episodes just to illustrate that him and DeVoe were beginning to act alike. Like, you know, we would flip from Barry and Iris to Star Labs and then go back to the pocket dimension where DeVoe's lair was. And you would just see really the men acting like assholes and then their wives were trying to pacify them. But the thing was, DeVoe wasn't letting Marlies in. So in order to illustrate that Barry was becoming like DeVoe, but Iris was his anchor, Iris was pretty much the one to 
say the right thing to put Barry back in his place. Now, again, I will say this much. I'm not saying I hate Iris because she apparently had all the answers. It, it just felt like that in season four, a lot of the other characters are either dumbed down or the answer was pretty much just put right under their noses. But Iris was the one to figure things out. Not Iris's fault. It was just poor writing that in order to make Iris feel useful, you really had to make all the other characters irrelevant. I mean, like even in flash time, in her flash time, one of the better episodes of season four, I'm not saying I hate Iris because, oh, well, she, man, the writers just made it so Iris was the one that gave Barry the answer to figure out how to stop the bomb before it went off. No, she just said like, you know, anchor, lightning rod, I forgot the exact phrasing, but that's when he figured out, oh, if I go into the speed force and trick it, I get the lightning to disarm the bomb and yada, yada, yada. But it, I mean, when you have what, two other speedsters, Harry Wells, Killer Frost and Vibe, they couldn't get rid of the bomb. But it just felt like they made what season three was pretty much Iris being, well, nothing but a plot device. The damsel in distress, everything had to be done in order to save her. Season four, it's like the plot revolved around Barry and Iris, but more specifically, Iris being the head of Team Flash and pretty much. You not that Barry was the smartest person ever to begin with. I mean, he wasn't a dummy, but in season four, you just saw him making dumbass mistakes. And then Iris being the one to call him out for his bullshit. And I'm not even counting like time travel and everything from the previous seasons, but more specifically season four, him lashing out at the teammates and, you know, pretty much wanting to do things himself and stuff like that. And then Iris had to be the one to reel him in once again, pretty much just showing that, hey, you want to see the difference between Barry and Iris and Thinker and the mechanic? Barry actually listens to his wife. They're actually a couple. It, it, with DeVoe, it's pretty much like the more powers he gains, the more irrational he becomes and the more isolated he is. So pretty much he's pushing his wife away while Barry and Iris are growing close together. But it really doesn't say much for the character. I know this is a bad example, but I'm an anime fan as well. Kind of like Pokemon Ash Ketchum almost every season. It's like he gets a soft reboot. Other times like a hard reboot where he seems to forget everything he learned in his previous region before the Pokemon League. Whether it be skills, battle techniques, intelligence. And then he gets reset to, I'm starting off on a new journey. And then he has two companions with him who are sometimes newbies themselves. And then they're teaching him things he should already know. You need to weaken the Pokemon before you catch it. Think about type advantages, Ash. Train some more. Don't just send your Pokemon into battle against like a fully evolved Pokemon if you haven't trained them. And then you move on to the Pokemon League where all of a sudden in some cases, this is like, yo, he's battling like someone who's been doing this for 20 years. And then you flip over to the Flash where some episodes... He just makes some dumb mistake that is like, okay, that, that might have slid in season one when you're still learning, but this is season four, Barry. What the heck are you doing? And then somebody has to call him out for it. So if West Irish friends, and I really hate to talk about it this way because I don't want to signal out a group of people, but I've just been personally attacked so many times on social media by these people that I'm just sick of it. I will post something. It's like, um, going back to last season, what was it when, um, in a badass move, Iris got purposefully stabbed by the mechanic in order to knock her out and send the, um, the, um, DeVos floating chair back to the pocket dimension in order to bring, what was it? Cisco, um, Barry vibe. And I think Ralph was with them too. Basically in order to get team flash back out of the pocket dimension, they had to send Marlies in the chair back. So she purposely got stabbed. And then in the fall, what was it like the next episode? She's lashing out at Harry and saying that she hit DeVoe's wife stabbed me. And it's like, um, nah, you purposely drew the blade into your shoulder. And then when I tweeted that, oh, Lord have mercy. No, what are you talking about? The mechanic stabbed her. It's funny because the previous episode, everybody was like, yeah, Iris as usual. Iris is useful. Take that. She took that blade like a like a like a warrior to save her husband. And then in the next episode, when people like me talk about how ridiculous it is for her to lash out at Harry, it's like she got stabbed. She was the victim. See what I mean? It's ignorant shit. And even talking about season four, when Harry was losing his intelligence and then Iris pretty much being well a bitch to him. That's almost the equivalent of you having like a grandparent who's 
has Alzheimer and their memory isn't as good as it used to be. And then like you're the grandchild and you're talking back and getting in their face and yelling at them. That's what I felt during that scene. It's like, yo, man, this guy is like your elder. He's obviously not as intelligent as he was. And you just feel the need to lash out at him multiple times. It's like, yo, that was stupid. And um, I mean, basically to West Allen fans, Iris can do no wrong. And if you say anything bad about the character, then you're just a hater. I've been called many things like asshole, hater. Um, you hate strong women and stuff like that. And it's just like I'm literally pointing out flaws in the character that are too obvious for anyone to miss except for West Allen fans. I mean, to be honest, in terms of the Barry and Iris relationship, I honestly still don't buy it. I mean, they're married now, but if you go back throughout the Flash, if not all the CW shows, Barry Allen has had more chemistry with almost everybody he met and interacted with. This, this goes for males too. And I'm not talking about a romantic sense, but I'm just talking about the chemistry and the dynamic between two characters, whether or not they're male or female. I remember one tweet. This was back during, uh, towards the end of Supergirl season. Oh yeah, it was the first episode where um, Flash met um, Kara when, um, she went over to when he went over to her earth. I think it was called World's Finest or something like that. And I remember somebody tweeted Barry Allen. Barry Allen has so much charisma and chemistry. He can have a meaningful relationship with a phone book. And I'm like, that is so true because he has such a demeanor where he's easily approachable, easily to talk to and stuff like that with other people. And it's great. But with Iris, I mean, they have had their moments, but I never really get that convincing you are the one for me kind of thing. I, I'm still hung up on the whole, that's kind of your adoptive brother kind of thing. And it just feels weird. Keep in mind in the comics, you know, Iris West is kind of stubborn and headstrong, but at the same time, she has a good head on her shoulders. They have the reporter angle down. I don't know what the TV show is doing. And I don't even have a problem with the whole Iris West is an African-American woman in the show while she's usually Caucasian in the comic books. It really doesn't have anything to do with, do with that to me. It's about the character. It's herself. And I feel like when it comes down to it, Felicity in season one, my gosh, even when uh, Barry Allen first appeared in the Arrowverse on Arrow, I love their chemistry together. And then with Supergirl, hell yeah, but my favorite girl was Patty Spivitt. And yeah, you, you could argue that, you know, there are a lot more lies and whatnot that Barry hid from her because he was the Flash. But those two had so much chemistry together. If you look at some of the deleted scenes from season two, you'll see what I mean. And then even more so with Caitlyn Snow. Oh, man. If heaven forbid those two have a meaningful scene together because with it is kind of crazy how some of these female characters that Barry interacts with, their scenes are only a couple of minutes long, but there's more chemistry and emotion between those two in that one scene than Barry and Iris throughout the entire Arrowverse. Like, they have had their moments, but at the same time, it, it just doesn't... Like, in season two... After I think this was towards the end of season two where um, Iris's new boss, the editor, the uh, black guy, he had asked her out on a date and I forgot what it was, but Iris came up to him and said, hey, um, I'm emotionally available or something. What was it like when you get back? I, well, I think it was what from Earth two or whatever or something. I forgot the exact details, but. That's when Iris came up to Barry and was like, well, when you get back, um, I want to see if the two of us will work out. Basically saying that, hey, when you get back from your adventure, come back to me. I'll be waiting for you and let's see if the two of us will work out. And I think Barry even said, well, Iris, you know how I felt about you since like last year. I think that's when at, at the Christmas episode, that's when he revealed how he really felt about her and stuff like that. And uh, she was still with Eddie. And it's like, well, I wasn't emotionally available back then. I was with Eddie. Basically, the whole theory about like, you know, when one car breaks down, you jump into the next one. And that's a flimsy way to even start a romance. And on top of that, you know, Flashpoint erased their kiss at the end of season two. But, you know, Barry and Iris are still close for some reason. I mean, you can make the argument, well, those two being together is destiny, the timeline, yada, yada, yada. And then even further, when he proposed just to, you know, change the timeline to save him from Savitar, possibly. 
And then further on into the musical episode where after giving him back the ring, she took his proposal again while he was singing to her in a very sweet scene. I will admit it was a good song, but nothing really changed. I mean, if anything, that episode, it just reinforced um, Monel and Iris's love for Barry and Kara because they, well, didn't they both get shot in the musical or something like that? And the whole course of it was to explain that no matter what, you know, between Monel's secrets and lies and Barry Barry's deception with the proposal, they still love each other anyway. So she took the ring, but there was really no character development. But whatever. Then they get married and stuff like that. Then we are the Flash season four. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't like... I understand that based off the source material, Barry and Iris are meant for each other. They're supposed to be together, but just the way they got there and the way they are now, it doesn't, it doesn't really feel right to me. It just doesn't, but that's just me. It's like, even if going into the counseling scenes of season uh, four, when she went off about, you just left me there, Barry. And it's like, well, the entire city was being hit by a speed force storm. And if I didn't go in there, the entire city, if not the world might've been, permanently wrecked or damaged because of this yeah um, i'm going to go into speed force storm uh excuse me the speed force prison so really i don't i mean not even that we don't even know what barry saw in there gosh but i feel like when it comes down to it west allen fans are the worst because they refuse to see the flaws within characters but instead just root them on no matter what they do now i'm not just sitting here with a clipboard jotting down hate notes for every time i feel iris rest a west screws up or why barry screws up or he's blinded by his love for iris that he doesn't give a damn about anyone else it's not that it's just the fact that if you are so ignorant that you won't even look at the flaws of a character then i don't see how you really love the character because Loving a character is like you love them at their best and you love them at their worst. It's like you take the flaws with their good qualities, but at the same time, you don't ignore them. You don't just sit there and act like everything this person does is perfect no matter what the outcome is. You look at character development. Oh man, Iris really screwed up. But because of that mistake, she learned from that and then the next time she did something, it was even better because of character growth. She looked at one mistake and then found a way to flip it around to increase her strength. But no, you say anything out of line, no matter how bitchy she is at times, no matter how stubborn Barry is to everybody else but Iris, those two are the couple, like even what Barry said in the counseling session. But Iris and Barry, we're the gold standard. No, you're not. Trust and believe there are a lot of flawed relationships out there in the Arrowverse, but those two would not be the ones I look towards for gold standard or relationship goals whatsoever. So to Iris West fans who are more than likely going to curse me out in the comment section, thanks for watching, first of all, and um, dislike the video all you want. I haven't watched the season five premiere of The Flash yet. It did air back on the 9th, but I'm very hesitant to watch it because the last two seasons have been very, very bad. But I will give it a shot. I'll probably wait until next week um, when episode two airs. No, no, you know what? It's it's the weekend. I will find, I will make time to sit down and watch it. So I will watch episode one of season five. See how things turn out. I mean, there are stories about how Nora West Allen is apparently supposed to have kind of a cold shoulder to um, Iris. And I'm very interested to see what, what that's about, but we'll just have to wait and see. I will definitely watch season one, uh, excuse me, episode one this weekend, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. West Allen fans come at me, whatever, do what you please. But if you just come at me like that, that just even further solidifies my point that you are against any sort of criticism because you love a character. So subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more videos like this on the channel and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How was the season five premiere of the flash is Iris the right woman for Barry. Do you think there was another female love interest that he could have pursued otherwise talk to you all soon.